Remember, this is particle physics lesson six, Feynman diagrams. Objectives are to give details of the four fundamental interactions. We're also going to compare W bosons and photons and have a general idea of what Feynman diagrams represent and to recall numerous diagrams. Right, let's recap this then. So the four fundamental interactions. So I'll take you through this, just, you know, talk through the content and then if you want to pause at the end and, and get the information down and then literally just learn it, you know, that'd be really helpful. So electromagnetic range. So electromagnetic is infinite range. Let's say its relative strength is one. So we're going to compare gravity strong and weak to the electromagnetic force. The exchange particle for the electromagnetic force is a photon. Uh, time for exchange is 10 to the minus 18 seconds which obviously is incredibly small. So range of gravity also infinite. Relative strength, 10 to the minus 36. So, you know, gravity is kind of an oddball. It is, you know, exceptionally weak. Uh, I read a paper a while back, probably when I was back at university, and some physicists much smarter than I had postulated that uh, gravity was, you know, because it was so weak, it was actually leaking in from a different universe. I mean, if you want to, want to research that or read about it, feel free. But it, it gets very strange. The exchange particle is the graviton. And it's undiscovered. Time for exchange. Ask someone else, I've got no idea. I don't know if anyone knows, to be honest. Uh, what about the strong force, then? Strong force... About 1 times 10 to the minus 18 metres, so relatively relatively short. Relative strength 100, so it's you know, approximately 100 times uh, stronger than the electromagnetic force. Exchange particles, the gluon. Time for exchange, really fast, uh, 10 to the minus 23 seconds. So the last one, weak force, range, about 1 times 10 to the minus 14 metres. Relative strength 10 to the minus 3, so, you know, weaker than electromagnetic and a lot weaker than the strong force. But that obviously makes sense because strong force, weak force, you know, you'd expect the weak force to be you know, many orders of magnitude weaker. Interaction, the bosons, W plus, W minus Z. Time for exchange, about 10 to the minus 10 or longer. The time for exchange doesn't really come up in the exam. To be honest, it uh, might be useful information if you've got good memory. Exchange particles, you definitely should know. Relative strength, you should be aware of. Range, you should definitely be aware of. All right, let's move on from there. So let's do a recap of W bosons and photons. It's only a recap if you've watched the previous videos. So W bosons mass, non-zero. Rest energy, about 80 mega electron volts. Photons have a mass of zero. I did do a calculation at university. I, I, I do distinctively remember where we calculated the, the photon to have a mass equal to like the minus to you know minus fifty three kilograms, the power of minus fifty three. But for all intents and purposes, it's zero. Range of bosons zero point zero zero one femtometer, which is much much smaller than the nucleus. Incredibly short. Photons, complete opposite, infinite. Charge of bosons. If it's W plus, it's positive. W minus, it's negative. Photons have zero charge. All right, let's move on. Feynman diagrams. Relatively straightforward. My advice is to learn them and literally regurgitate them in the examination. I will. I am not a quantum physics expert. I will try my best to you know to explain them. And there's a few little things that I can talk about that might make a little bit of sense. So, is a you know an example of a Feynman diagram. So they used to illustrate the interactions between subatomic particles. So the opposite, this diagram, is showing the repulsion between, between protons. So the lines do not represent the path of the particles. The virtual photon exchanged is represented by a wave. Just to note, the, the strong nuclear force between nucleons can be represented in a similar way. In this case, the exchange particle is called a gluon. You could spend some time on, you know, just literally go on Google, type in examples of Feynman diagrams. If you want the A-level specific ones, type A-level. You know, there, there are a lot of resources online to have a look at. Let's look at some more stuff anyway. 
So just some notes on family diagrams. So it really should be stressed that family diagrams are not a description of what is, is physically happening at all. Uh, you do get time on the family diagrams. Time is always moving from left to right or, you know, down to up. It's not necessarily good English, but, you know, from down upwards. So the arrow on the line doesn't denote direction of motion. It's purely to differentiate matter uh, from antimatter. So regular matter particles are denoted by you know, a right or upwards pointing arrow and antimatter particles are denoted by a left or downwards pointing arrow. That will specifically make more sense when I show you some diagrams that involve you know, normal matter and antimatter. There's something interesting coming up as well, which I'll try to explain. I'm not sure if it's if it is right, although I'm, basically physicists aren't sh really sure what it means either. By physicists, I mean you know the heavyweights, the professors, etc. All right, let's move on. So there's a second diagram. So the interaction of a neutron and a neutrino. So a neutron and a neutrino come in. The neutrino is like a, a V-type shape. I think it's a mu. This one. So it might look kind of like that. And if you see a beta particle, obviously that's that's beta, like this one on the right hand side is beta minus. Beta minus is basically an electron. You know, it's the same thing. So if you see beta minus, it's just an electron. So a neutron and a neutrino come in. We've got W minus boson interaction. And then proton and an electron uh, come out the other end. So neutrinos, you need to know this, are affected by the nuclear weak force. They don't actually feel the strong or electrostatic forces. And the Feynman diagram opposite shows what happens when a neutron interacts with a neutrino. W minus boson is exchanged, resulting in the production of a proton and beta minus particle. Beta minus, you know, being an electron. And charge is conserved during the interaction. So W minus is negative. If you want to learn more about charges and you're not quite sure, uh, some of the previous lessons I've done on particle physics spend quite a lot of time uh, looking at conservation. It's so like charge, baryon number, lepton number, etc. In terms of the diagram, you know, get that diagram down. Make sure you remember what it is. Let's look at some more. So this is an interesting one, beta minus decay. So I've actually got two versions of this one here. So time's going from bottom, you know, down to up. And we've got a, I've got up, down, down, N, but basically the, the N is the neutron and the up, down, down is just the quark composition of a proton. Sorry, a neutron, which is up, down, down. Um, and basically what happens is the neutron will decay into a proton. But what happens in terms of quarks is that a, a down quark will turn into an up quark. So that's basically two versions in one. Yeah, W minus boson. And then we've got a, an anti-electron neutrino. So as you can see, the, the bar above the, the neutrino, so this bit, that bar just means antiparticle. And the antiparticle is going, or appears to go, backwards in time. We've got an electron also coming out. Let's look at some notes, and then I'll talk about the, the backwards in time thing. So in this case, the neutron decays into a proton, and a W- minus boson. So while still within the nucleus, due to its very short range, short range the W- minus boson decays to a beta minus particle and an antineutrino. Beta minus particle, remember, is the electron. In this case, it is an electron, but it could also be written like this. Just a note of what I've already stated. The antineutrino is distinguished from a neutrino by placing a bar above the, the normal particle signal. So that just means anti. So what do we mean about going backwards in time? Do particles actually go backwards in time? There's, there's a bit of debate about what going back in time would actually look like and I don't think there's many physicists really that would anticipate that the antimatter actually goes back in time. There's a rather strange theory, in, in my eyes anyway, with that Richard Feynman discussed with another physicist. So basically I wouldn't think about it in terms of time travel. What you can think about it is in terms of current flow. As soon as the particles move, they're, they're, they're charged, and basically a moving charge, as you should know, a moving charge is, is a current. You know, current is the rate, of, the rate of flow of electric charge. So if you've got 
you know, normal matter moving in one direction, that might be a positive charge, a positive current. So if you go, if you've got antimatter that's, you know, depicted as traveling in the opposite direction, that could be a current that's, you know, going in the opposite direction. And on the Feynman diagrams, it's, it's represented as the, you know, literally the, the antiparticles going in the opposite direction to normal matter. Like I said previously, though, I'm no expert on, on quantum mechanics. Uh, quantum mechanics, when you actually start getting into the, the nitty gritty of things, if you know, if you decide to do physics at university, is very bizarre. And I think the more that you study it, the more you realize, you know, that it is really bizarre. I mean, physicists can make precise calculations using quantum mechanics, um, you know, with a very high degree of accuracy. It doesn't mean that physicists agree or understand why things happen. Again, like I said, I hope some of you do go to university to do physics. Um, the more people, the better. All right, let's move on anyway. My advice is to learn that diagram, definitely. Let's look at beta plus next. So beta plus, instead of a neutron decaying to a proton, we've got a, a proton decaying into a neutron. And again, the there's two versions on this diagram. So we've got proton straight into neutron, or it can be in terms of quarks, and in this instance, an up quark will turn into a down quark. And why that happens is a different thing entirely. It's typically down to something called flavor of quark. If you want to look about that, flavor, color, things like that, if you want to look at that, please feel free to do so. If you go to university, you will study it there. So we've got the proton into a neutron, we've got a W plus boson, and then we've got a, an electron, electron neutrino, and a positron. And as you can see, the positron is wink wink moving backwards in time again if you think about it in terms of the you know just an electrical current traveling in the opposite direction you know, it might make more sense all right so in this case a proton decays into a neutron and a w plus boson uh, we're still within the nucleus due to its very short range the w plus boson decays to a beta plus or a positron so i'm actually right so the beta plus same thing uh, particle and the neutrino. The neutrino is obviously the electron neutrino. No, no, the antineutrino is distinguished from a neutrino, you know, symbolically by placing a bar above the normal particle symbol. Which I talked about earlier. I've actually mentioned that twice. So you should already know that. If you missed it, it's there again. Let's move on. Let's look at electron capture. Remember to pause for the, you know, you might have to rewind, but pause for the diagrams. Make sure you, you know, if all else fails, learn the diagrams as best you can. So electron capture, this can happen, uh, occur, or happen within a, a proton-rich nucleus. So one of the excess protons interacts with one of the, the inner shell electrons to form a neutron and produces a neutrino. So basically the a an electron in orbit will drop into the nucleus, will, you know, be absorbed into a proton. Bang, you get a neutron. So this one, proton and electron come in from the bottom. W plus bosons, the exchange particle, get a neutron and a neutrino at the top. Again, if you want to look at the conservation properties, I would go back into a previous lesson that I've done that talks about conservation in, in detail. And that's it. So my advice is, you know, primarily, you know, this thing, this is quite confusing. The, my advice primarily is to learn, literally learn the diagrams, do the exam. The exam practice is so important. Do the exam practice, learn the diagrams. Hopefully bits of what I've, you know, talked about make sense, you know, the exchange particles and so on. Again, I've done previous lessons on exchange particles. And at the beginning of this lesson, I actually talked about, you know, the fundamental forces and bosons and photons. So I hope that's helped. Um, you know, your, your A-level book will also, if you've got a textbook, that'll also be really helpful in this regard. But basically, they'll probably cover the stuff that I've talked about, apart from the, the traveling backwards in time stuff. So if you wondered why the, you know, why the antiparticles go backwards, hopefully I've, I've covered that and, and satisfied you with a, you know, a, a decent answer. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope that was useful and I'll uh, speak to you soon.